Hey there, and welcome to the Overcomers Overcoming Podcast. It is great to have you join us. This podcast series features those who have gained victory over a life encounter. With that life experience, we encourage those who are experiencing something that might seem to be insurmountable. We advance and encourage others by passing forward evaluated life experiences. We have three objectives in this podcast series. We want to encourage those who are engaged in any type of life encounter by offering to walk with you to help you gain victory over anything that might seem impossible. We want to share our experience to help you. Our second objective is to help you develop a confident resolve that there are multiple options to get past any life obstacle. It's a matter of thinking into the situation. Our third objective is to help you with critical thinking skills. If you are facing a dilemma resulting from a previous decision you wish you could reverse, we want to help you think into all of the facts and factors involved in making an informed decision. I'm Ron Cooper, founder of The Cooper Culture. I'm with my wife and business manager, Marty. Together, we are The Cooper Culture Company, who is sponsoring this podcast series. Today, we feature Christian Del Huerta, who's from a family who emigrated from Cuba during the communist revolution. He's a product of that family and the travails he endured through his time with his parents while they were in Cuba. He addresses power and the power that lies within us to understand how to effectively identify and use power in a way that is not abusive. Marty, what are some takeaways our listeners can gain from Christian's testimony? Ron, I admire someone coming from a foreign country. Christian didn't speak English, but he learned English. He made something of himself and is making a difference with people through his power message. Marty, let's listen together and learn how we can effectively identify and use power in our lives in a way that is not abusive. Let's listen and learn together. Christian, thank you so much for joining us. You have had some life experiences. You are self-described in a nomadic type of situation. We're talking to you while you are in Ecuador. We are in Maryland, about 90 minutes south of Washington, D.C. So through technology, we're able to be almost literally side by side. So great to have you with us, Christian. And I wonder if you would tell our listeners just a little bit about some of the perhaps life encounters you have had. Our listeners are going to be very interested in those things, not dwelling on the past, but just a little bit of background of what you've encountered, and then most importantly, how you have recovered from and how you're going forward today and forward. Yeah, first of all, Ron and Marty, thank you. Thanks for, for having me on the show. I was born in Cuba you know, during the, like the communist revolution. And my parents were involved in the counter revolution. So they were involved, you know, opposing the, the communist regime. And so there was this kind of push pull between, because there was real danger in, in being seen too much. So there was this push pull between excelling and yet not being seen too much. So as part of that, I became kind of more introspect, introspective, more introverted, shy even. And so when we came to the States and I was 10, not speaking a word of English, I think that even enhanced that more, it magnified it more, that, that wanting to not be seen too much. At the same time, like, like most of us, we want to be seen with this conflict inside of me. And I was a good student. You know, that was one of the benefits of, of having been raised in a, in a communist country without TV and with few toys. You know, we had to invent our own games and we grew up reading instead of watching TV um, because there was, we had a TV, but there was nothing worth watching. So I was pretty much a, a 4.0 student in high school, except for 1B. And looking back on it, I got, of course, I didn't set out to do this consciously. But I know that looking back on it, I sabotaged my grade point average so that I wouldn't have to give the valedictorian speech. Because at that point in my life, there was just no way, no human possible way that I could have stood up in front of an auditorium filled with hundreds and hundreds of people to speak. And so it, it's sad. And I know that a lot of the entrepreneurs in, 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 your, in your audience probably relate to that. 
you know, to, to the ways that we allow fear to hold us back, fear in, in any of its forms, to hold us back from doing what we really came here to do. And so flash forward to today, I've spoken all over the world, I've spoken at, at dozens of universities and conferences and on the TEDx stage. So I know we can overcome any of the fears and any of the past trauma uh, that we have allowed to hold us back in the past. I sincerely appreciate your saying that, Christian. And I, I'm going to suppose there wasn't a single event, but it was more so a process that you overcame your fear. Can you point to a turning point that began your turn from fear into what maybe uh, you, you would categorize a greater confidence? Sure. I mean, so I'll, I'll, I'll speak first about the public speaking part of it, but at the same time, there was, other, there was a lot of other stuff that I was overcoming. Like my adolescence was one, one long depression with, with suicidal fantasies. And, you know, flash forward again to today, it's like I don't, that's, I don't even relate to that. Like no matter what happens in my life, no matter the circumstances, the details, whether a relationship works out or it doesn't, whether a project succeeds or it fails, in quotes, Never, ever, ever do I question my sense of self. And focusing on the, on the public speaking part of it, like I knew, like I always had a sense of mission and I somehow managed to get through college without having to get up in front of a room um, and deliver a speech. I was okay from, you know, from down here, from, from the audience, raising my hand and answering a question. But there was that psychological block of getting in front of, of a group and like just blanked. But I knew that if I was going to fulfill my work, my mission, my, my, the reason that I was here for that, I had to get over that. And so I signed up for a public speaking course, which I hated, detested it, because for 14 weeks, I had to get up in front of, you know, in front of a group and deliver three two minute speeches. Come Monday, I was already dreading it. I was already losing sleep and angsting about it. And what am I going to say and this and that, like all, all this stuff that we do inside of our heads. But what happened? Midway through, like seven, eight weeks into it, having done it so many times, it stopped being such a big deal. Like, and, and so that's one of the ways in which I, I know and, and teach other people how to overcome fear, which is, you know, if you imagine, and this is from a book called The Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, imagine concentric circles. This circle here represents our comfort zone. This is, this is where we're comfortable now, being with ourselves, being with other people, being in the world. Every time we step a little bit, even if it's just a baby step, beyond that comfort zone, we stretch ourselves. We, we place ourselves in a little bit of discomfort, whether it's delivering a speech or, or going on a job interview or, or saying yes and going on a coffee date. We stretch ourselves. And if we do that minor, even a little baby stretch every, every week, once a week for 52 weeks, what happens after a year, we're like, you know, way out here in terms of our comfort zone, and that doesn't shrink back. And, and so, like the title of that book that I mentioned says, you know, like, we feel the fear, but we don't allow the, the fear to hold us back any, any, anymore. We transcend it, we override it, and we do it anyway. I'm trying to project back at an earlier age, and our, there may be some listeners who are saying, I've, I have such a morbid fear of, and then whatever it is, but was there a point in your life when you just introspectively said something to, the, to yourself, I cannot continue to exist with this fear, this, these suicidal tendencies, something like that? Did you take that on yourself? Was it a friend, a mentor that helped you through that? Can you take us back to that thought process and how sure. you overcame yeah, part of, part of what I was struggling with as a teenager uh, was that I knew from a young age that I was gay and I was raised in a very Catholic environment. So trying to reconcile two huge parts of who I am, my, my sexuality and my spirituality in a religion that told me that I was going to burn in hell for eternity was, you know, quite a bit of conflict. Quite, it, was, it was quite a source of conflict. And, and then also my, psych my father was a psychiatrist. So I had an extra layer of, of guilt in my own mind that if, you know, that if it ever came out that, that, that I was gay, that I was gonna negatively impact his practice because of all the conditioning and all the misunderstandings about you know, religion and, and, and spirituality and sexuality. 
And, and so that's why I say that my adolescence was one long dark depression. As I was dealing with really deep fundamental existential questions, like who am I and what am I here for? Looking back on it, I'm glad, you know, I'm grateful for that because it forced me to ask those difficult questions at a young age. When, you know, questions that most of us have to face at some point, you know, look, those really important questions. And so for me, what, what, the, what the shift was, was when I fell in love. You know, I had had sex before be, be, as a teenager, but it was from always in, in the hidden, guilt-ridden, shame-filled place. And, and, and in the down low, nobody knew about it. So it was very secretive. And so when I fell in love, it was like from that moment on, like I even remember the first kiss. It was from that moment on, there wasn't a, a priest or a minister or a rabbi or, or an imam or a psychiatrist who could tell me that it was wrong because it, what I was feeling inside was so beautiful. It couldn't be an illness. It couldn't be a sin from that point on. And, and that changed my life. And then I went through a process like many of us do too, where I threw the baby out with a baptismal water because I wanted nothing to do with anything that smacked of spirituality, confusing it with religion. And no wonder, you know, given the, the treatment that most LGBT people have, have experienced and many continue to experience at the hands of religions. But what I discovered too, in doing some research was that before the patriarchal times and cultures, people that we today call LGBT were not only spiritually inclined, but were actually honored all over the world for the roles of spiritual service and leadership that we played. And so that continued that process of, of getting to the place of self-acceptance and then self-love. And, and it's been a journey, but that's why I can tell you now that you know, I've, I've faced my inner demons and faced the difficult questions and gotten to a place in my life where it, that's unshakable. My, my, my level of self-love and self-acceptance is like, it's unshakable, no matter what happens in my life. And so that I know if, if that can happen to me, it can happen in anybody. So it, there was an aspect of your life, a process to accept yourself, know who you are, and be comfortable with who you are. It, did I interpret what you're saying correctly, Christian? Correctly, yeah. And, and, and that's what this latest book is about. You know, I get into, the, into those issues that we were just talking about in my first book, Coming Out Spiritually. The second book that I, that I published more recently is called Awakening the Soul of Power, and, and that's where I guide everybody on that journey of self-discovery and self-empowerment and self-empowerment, which begins with self-awareness because we can't do anything about what we're not aware of. And what I've discovered, Ron, over the years of, you know, over more than 30 years as, as, as a coach and as a spiritual retreat facilitator, most of us struggle with issues around power. So, you know, there's, we have conflict about it. Part of us wants it, part of us is afraid of it. And I think what we fear in the depth of us is that if we really stepped into our power, if we really stepped into all of who we are, that other people wouldn't be able to handle it and that we might end up rejected and alone. And, and who wants that? Um, I think we also fear that we might abuse it. And no wonder, like, all we gotta do is glance at the headlines or, or look at the, or watch the news on any given day to witness at least one abuse of power. And who wants to be, who wants to do that? And then we've also been conditioned to believe that power is a bad thing. Power is a negative thing with quotes like power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And who wants to be corrupted? And so when you add to the mix, the fact that we've been conditioned as well to, to, to fear conflict, we're afraid of the emotions. We hate confrontations. Somewhere along the way, somebody decided that the emotions are weakness. It's like, wait a minute. The emotions are a weakness. They're not strength. They're just energy like everything else. That, that spiritual teachings used to tell us that everything is energy. Now we know from quantum physics, it's all energy. And so are the emotions, so is the body, even though it might feel like a solid. And so when you put all, all that into a mix, what happens is that we end up giving away our power, our innate, inherent power that nobody can give to us, nobody can take away. We are the only ones who can give it away. And the sad part, as you know, is that we give away our power. We say yes, when inside we really feel no. We, we settle for less. We hide our light under a bushel because, and we settle for crumbs of, of pseudo love. We settle for, for a false sense of acceptance, an illusion of security. It is not a very effective strategy. So what this book is about, it's like, how do we step into power in a different way? How do we step into power in a way that is not about force 
or fear or, or domination or control or hierarchy in a, in a way that it doesn't require that I push anybody down or step on them in order for, for me to feel powerful. We all have that ability and, and that power inside of us. Did you live, what, a period of 20 years or so, just uncertain who you were, your confidence and power, as you refer to it? And for the person who may be experiencing something very similar to that, power, is that a matter of feeling confident about yourself or am I making the wrong correlation? No, it's, it's, a, it's a complete self-confidence is an expression of, of inner power you know, as is, as is self-love. And again, it, it begins with self-awareness, which makes, makes room, makes possible self-acceptance, which then opens the door to self-love. And yeah, yes, that's, and, and part of the reason that we get confused about power is because there's different types. So most of us tend to associate power with, you know, people who have money, who are famous, people who are high up in some kind of um, hierarchy, whether it's a uh, the corporate ladder or some political institution or religious institution. But the thing about all those forms of power is that they're external, they're outside of us, which makes them fickle. Here today, gone tomorrow. Whereas the other kind of power that we're talking about that's, that I call spiritual power, soulful power, is inside each one of us. And nobody can give to us, nobody can take away. Worldly power or ego power also has an agenda. It's always trying to grab something for itself. And it's always blowing itself up to, up to seem bigger than it is. Like it's self-aggrandizing. Whereas the other kind of power, soulful power, spiritual power, is humble. It doesn't need to prove anything to anybody. And it's about service. It's about making a difference. So think about a Gandhi or Gandalf, if you're into the Lord of the Rings. In, in their simple monastic robes, their sandal feet, from looking at them, you'd never know how much power they hold. But when it's needed, watch out, get out of the way. Gandhi brought the British Empire to its knees when it was at its highest point in terms of global reach without ever shooting a gun or landing a single punch. That's power. What are your thoughts about power? Do we have power? Is it something we have within us? Is it something we need to be aware of? Scripture talks to us in Isaiah 40, 29, with God saying, He, God, gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. We do have power. I believe God created us with that. As Christian says, power can be abused, but I think it's also a matter of us being aware of who we are, the power that is within us. Do you think of power as potential? Do we sometimes live well below our potential? I'm curious your thoughts about this. Certainly we can abuse power. It can become a point of arrogance, but yet if we think of it as potential, that God has equipped us to be more perhaps than what we think of ourselves and we can do more than we think we can do. Let's work together to determine the right source of and right application of power. For the person who might be feeling that I am, I'm not sure what value I have and I'm not totally self-aware but they're intrigued with your term spiritual power. How would a person determine in a, let's say, a healthy way, their spiritual power? You overcame a, a low point in your life to where you now have a very confident, healthy spiritual power. For the listener who's saying, how did you develop that? Because I don't feel I have it. How would you start that person to develop right power, if that's the correct term? You know, not to, um, not to plug the book, but, but read the book, read, buy this book, because I really went out of my way to make it very readable, to make it interesting, and to make it accessible. So we, you know, wove in a lot of uh, metaphors from culture, from movies, um, from, from books, tied it into the hero's journey, so that to help everybody identify and unleash, to unlock the hero that's inside each one of us. 
And, and so designed it also with short chapters because I know how busy everybody is. I know that well, by the time we get home, we just want to veg out in front of the TV and not read, not think. You know, this, this type of work that, that, that we're talking about, which requires looking at ourselves, it, it requires facing our, our, our inner doubts or inner demons. It, it requires sometimes remembering stuff that's not fun to remember or pleasant to feel. But that's why, I'm, that's why I say that it's a heroic path. And, and it is, yes, it, it takes work. Uh, yes, it requires self-observation, self-analysis, looking at understanding why we do the things we do. Um, why we sometimes get caught in these patterns of behaviors, patterns of relationships that sometimes feel like we're in the same boring movie. Might be a different actor, a different co-lead in this new relationship, but it's the same crap coming up. The same kind of patterns, the same argument you know, that we've done, gotten stuck in, the same power struggles that we've gotten stuck in for decades in some cases. So being willing to look at ourselves, which is a, a heroic act, it's also incredibly empowering and incredibly liberating. And, and our willingness to do that, you know, the, the, the reward for that is freedom. We get to be who we are, wherever we are. And again, to, you know, to, to answer your question more directly, it begins with the basics, like observing ourselves, understanding why we, why we do the things we do, why we have certain triggers, Understanding how the mind works, how it keeps us in a self-made prison of fear and limitation and victimization and, and um, self-doubt and defensiveness. And, and once we begin to understand that, then we can let ourselves out of that self-made prison. And it's a journey. It takes work. And it's, as far as, as I'm concerned, it's the most worthwhile um, endeavor that any of us can take. And then the reward of, the reward of is, is freedom and personal empowerment. And peace of mind, like we can sleep peacefully at night and look ourselves in the mirror and smile. In your book, Awakening the Soul of Power, is available on Amazon and uh, in other places where books are sold? Yeah, exactly. You can order it, order it at your local bookstore or you can get it on Amazon. Okay. And <clears throat> Awakening the Soul of Power, is there an aspect of... We have power within us. We just need to awaken that power. Is that part of the, the book title? Yeah, we need to. I think it's more like uncovering it. It's there. Like the potential is there inside every one of us. Like there's no, no excuses. It's all in there. So the work is more like getting rid of the crap that's in the way. That's been covering up our potential, which, you know, potential comes from the same root as power. So, so yes. It's, it's there, and it's, it's an honorable and worthwhile journey to take. Now, thank you for that, Christian. I know there are many of us who are not living our potential because of crap, smoke, whatever it is, <laughs> in the way of, and we're allowing stuff to keep us from living our full potential. And I do think it's, as you are saying, it's a matter of us awakening the, the power that is within us to live our full potential. That may be my way of, of expressing what I think you are saying. You nailed it. That's, that's exactly what it is. And you know, to add up one final layer on that, in terms of expressing our potential, there isn't anybody out there, anybody in this universe or any other universe, if you believe in the multi-universes that are, that are now so, you know, coming out in, in movies and, and our culture, there isn't anybody out there who has the same genetics, the same skill set, the same qualities, the same interests, the same dreams, the same, the same experiences that make each one of us unique. If, if we don't give expression to that unique human potential, ain't nobody else going to do it hope that everybody listening to this or watching this has lived long enough to know that there isn't any relationship, no amount of external power, no amount of possessions, no amount of sex, no amount of travel, not enough money that's going to make us happy. The only thing that's going to make us happy, as far as I'm concerned, is, is diving within, discovering who we are, and giving expression fully to that unique human potential. That is very well said, Christian, and I appreciate you saying that. We have recently helped people emphasize what we call I am statements. I am. And what are the attributes of that? For us, that is one way of expressing 
the power within us. I am happy. I am adaptable, such as that. And that, I think, is just one way we can exercise the power that is within us. And it's through a self-awareness. But that's just one, one aspect of what we do. And I've not yet read your book. I do want to, to get your perspective of awakening the soul of the power. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll make sure you get a copy of the book. And thanks so much for having me in the show. Like, I really appreciate the opportunity. And, and thanks for having the show. I know that it, in, in your and Marty's wit, uh, willingness to have this show and to do all the work that I know happens behind the scenes to, to host a podcast, many lives are, are improved and changed and impacted. So, so thank you. Well, thank you, Christian. And thank you for the book and the work you're doing that what we want to do is help advance people. We have discovered too many people who are not living their full potential because they are masking the power that they have within them. I may be using slightly different terms than what you do, but uh, people not living their full potential. But thank you for reaching out to others. Thank you. Let's engage on the topic of power. The effective and appropriate application of power each of us has, maybe that power, that potential we need to develop but what is it about power that some people abuse power? Some people want to lord themselves over others. It could be a matter of personal insecurities. There could be an application of a lack of confidence that we don't use the power that is given to us. We have within us. I do believe it's a matter of awareness. Through awareness, we can become very knowledgeable of the power we have, but I think it's a matter of making certain we know how to effectively use that power. That is, we can move forward with those talents, those traits, those abilities we have if our mindset is to advance others and that's the purpose of wanting to know and effectively apply the power we have within us. Everyone is unique. Christian is very adept in acknowledging our uniqueness. Every one of us has a very defined role. God created each one of us and every one of us is created for a very specific purpose. It is a matter of us knowing our talents, our strengths, for those of us whom Jesus Christ has saved and we have committed our life to him, we have spiritual gifts the Holy Spirit has endowed in us. It's a matter of us knowing those spiritual gifts and knowing how to effectively apply those gifts such that we can effectively use the power, the potential that is within each of us and when our heart attitude, when our mindset is to advance others, we want to make others better, God will work through us to help us find, help us work with those who can benefit from the heart attitude, the very positive direction we have through the power, the potential, the gifting that is made available to each one of us. I was in an early part of life where I felt I didn't have any power. I didn't know exactly what my value was. I had a very low confidence. I had no ability to speak as I am now, but it's through four men who mentored me. It's through their coaching, their acceptance of me. They're possibly, I'm talking with a person who is uncertain of what their power is, their potential. They too may have a feeling of very low confidence. I want to encourage you to reach out and seek help. And the term seek help might be somewhat offensive. Can I just recommend that you partner with a person who wants to advance you? Everyone can benefit from coaching. I was coached by these four men who helped me through a very low point in my life. Coaching can help us identify anything that is holding back our potential, our power might be overshadowing 
the traits, the talents, the abilities we have. I want to encourage you to seek out a coach. Marty and I are certified life coaches through the John Maxwell Certified Leadership Team. We want to help you overcome anything that may be keeping you from living your full potential, the full power that is within you. It is possible, as I was, that I had things said to or about me that I allowed to reside in my subconscious that periodically would control my conscious thoughts. Let's schedule a 30-minute complimentary coaching session to determine if we can help you overcome anything of your past that may be inhibiting you from serving at your full power. Contact us at ron at thecooperculture.com or marty, M-A-R-T-Y, at thecooperculture.com. Let's schedule a 30-minute complimentary coaching session from which you can determine if Marty or I is the right person to help you live your full power. We hope we can warrant a five-star rating with this podcast. We hope you will want to subscribe. We hope you'll also want to share this podcast with your Facebook friends, your LinkedIn connections, your Facebook and Instagram communities. The more we share, the more we engage, the more we're willing to open up with each other and share successes, those things that have not been as successful, the greater opportunity we'll have to awaken the power in each one of us to help us live the designed life that God created for each one of us and help each other live our full potential. We look forward to working with you.